calculate molar mass. And what is molar mass? In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate molar mass of a compound by looking at its chemical formula. Now, your textbook or your teacher or study guide may use words such as molar mass, molecular mass, molecular weight, molar weight, formula mass, formula weight, but I'm happy to tell you that all of these names refer to the same thing, and that is molar mass. So this video today will apply to all of those terms. Now the symbol for molar mass is big M, and the unit for molar mass is grams per mole. And the reason why this is the unit for molar mass is because the molar mass represents the number of grams per one mole of atoms. For example, if we look at carbon, we have 12 grams per one mole. For oxygen, we have 16 grams. This is the, the mass per one mole. And where do these numbers come from? We're going to use the periodic table. These are all the elements, and our compounds are made up of individual elements. And each individual element has two numbers associated with it. Each element has a small number, which is the atomic number. That is the number of protons within that atom, and the big number, which is the atomic mass number. When we calculate the molar mass, we use the periodic table, and we add up each individual element's atomic mass numbers in order to give us the molar mass of the entire compound. So for example, if my question says, calculate the molar mass of nitrogen dioxide, and within this compound, we have one atom of nitrogen, and two oxygen atoms. So you see that there is no subscript here, which means we have one nitrogen atom. There's a little baby two over here, which means I have two oxygens. We've got nitrogen and we've got oxygen. We add up the atomic masses. So we don't care about the atomic numbers. We want the atomic masses in order to calculate the molar mass of NO2. So how we do this is as follows. We're going to take the mass, atomic mass of nitrogen, and because we have one nitrogen, it's going to be 14 times 1, or just 14. And then we're going to add that to our mass of oxygen. Now, our atomic mass for oxygen is 16. Remember, it's not the small number, it's the big number we have two oxygen atoms. So we're going to say 16 times two. And what that gives us is 46 grams per mole. It's very important to understand what the molar mass means. Now remember the unit is grams per mole. And that tells us that one mole so for example, one mole of nitrogen dioxide has a mass of 46 grams. And molar mass is a very, very important quantity to be able to calculate. It. And that is because it is something that helps us go from grams, so mass, to number of moles. And this is very, very, very important in chemistry. In our next example, I want us to calculate the molar mass of calcium carbonate. Calcium, there's our one element with our atomic mass number of 40. Then we've got carbon is our next element with the atomic mass number of 12. And we've got some oxygens over here as well. And remember oxygen has an atomic mass number of 16. So the atomic masses are these numbers over here, the big numbers. Our molar mass is equal to, we've got one calcium, the atomic mass number of 40. 40 times one plus carbon, an atomic mass number of 12. We've got 12 times one plus our oxygen has an atomic mass number of 16, but there's three oxygens. So we go 16 times three. When we add all of those up, we're going to get 100 grams per mole. 
Just remember what this means, the grams per mole. It means that one mole of calcium carbonate has a mass of 100 grams. Our next example involves brackets or parentheses. And it's very important to know how to determine the number of atoms of each element within a compound that has brackets. And our next example, I want us to calculate the molar mass of Al2SO43. This is aluminium sulfate. So in terms of our aluminium, Al, we have two atoms because of the two over there. Now, when you look at this over here, because we have brackets, because we have parentheses, I need you to think of this as follows. That little three outside the bracket over there applies to both the sulfur and the oxygen over here. You are going to distribute this three into the brackets like that. So we don't have one sulfur anymore. We have one times three, three atoms. And in terms of our oxygen atoms, we don't have four oxygen atoms. We need to multiply that by three. So we have four times three, we have 12 atoms. Just remember what this brackets means, the SO4 with the three outside, it means we have an SO4 and another SO4 and another SO4. So one, two, three sulfurs and four, eight, 12 oxygens. We have aluminum, which is 27, and we're going to multiply that by two. Plus sulfur, remember we have three sulfurs, 32. So we're gonna say 32 times three, plus oxygen, which is 16. We're gonna times that by 12, because remember, four times three is 12. And we're gonna get 342 grams per mole. In our last and most difficult example, we're going to look at an example of a hydrate or a hydrated compound. These are compounds that contain water. Now, when you see a hydrate, you'll often see a dot in the middle of the compound. So you've got a dot and then you've got your water molecules. I know in mass, a dot can mean multiply, but it's very important to know that when you are working out the molar mass of a hydrous compound or a hydrate, you do not multiply anything. You just add up the atomic masses of the individual atoms as normal. In this compound, we've got hydrated copper to chloride. Now what this means is surrounding this one copper chloride molecule, we have two water. So for every one copper chloride, we have two of these. We've got one copper. We've got two chlorine. Then because of this over here, because we have two water, we don't only have two hydrogens. We have two times two hydrogens, four hydrogens. And then for oxygen, we don't only have one oxygen. We have two multiplied by our one oxygen. So that two applies to the hydrogen and that two applies to the oxygen. So that we're going to multiply it by two. So remember that dot does not mean multiply. We are simply going to just carry on adding the mass of this. comma five grams per mole. So now no matter what example you get or no matter what question you get in the exam, as long as you have your periodic table and you have this video, you'll be able to calculate the molar mass of that compound. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for many more chemistry videos just like this one.